it's Alana welcome back to my channel so if you've been here for a while you know that I'm a nurse aide if you are new welcome to my channel if you want you can subscribe and give this video a thumbs up you haven't seen the video yet but if you like me you can thumbs it up now and after you watch the video if you like the video you can give it a thumbs up or if you just want to give it a th okay you get it so today I'm gonna be telling you a little bit about my job besides YouTube Okay, so first I'm just gonna explain to you guys why I became a nurse aide, a little bit about the classes, the exam, and then I'm gonna tell you some stories that I have that are a little bit interesting. Okay, I am extremely grateful that I was able to work as a nurse aide and experience all of the things that I did because it taught me what is really important in life. When you're working with people who literally cannot move at all and they need you to do everything for them you start to think about things that normal people especially like my age wouldn't think about I'm 20 years old I started being a nurse when I was 18 at 18 years old every day you're not thinking when are my parents gonna die when are my parents gonna be in a nursing home of not able to move when am I gonna be not able to move when you start thinking about the end of your life, the end of your family's life, you start... <sighs> you start to think about what's truly important. And when you sit down with your residents, with your patients, whatever they are, and you actually talk to them and ask them, I would ask them so many questions. What's your best memory? Do you remember getting engaged? Do you remember getting married? Wh who, uh, do you have any kids? Wh what was your best memory with your kids? What is the one thing that you regret not doing in life? The most important thing in life is the people in your life. It's not materialistic things. And working as a nurse aide, seeing that these people live outside of their home, they don't have their possessions that they used to have, they're sad because they're alone. They're not sad because they don't have that ring that they used to have, that item of clothing. They're sad because they miss their family. And that is what is truly important. And it's sad because nowadays we all think that having an amazing car, having a nice house, having like designer clothes, having whatever, and I'm guilty of it too. You think having a certain appearance is gonna make your life so much better. And I, I try to say in every single video, where I show myself getting something done, that you having a straighter nose, you having bigger lips, you having bigger boobs, that's not gonna make people fall in love with you. It's not gonna make your parents more proud of you. It's not gonna make you get a job. If you wanna feel a little bit more confident, then do it. But don't think that that's the most important thing in life, the way you look, how you dress, the car you drive, how much money you have. All of those things don't matter. And I'm so happy that I was able to have these jobs because I'm thinking about things that I normally wouldn't and I've learned a lot of things that I wouldn't have learned if I didn't work as a nurse aide. I wanted to become a nurse aide because I wanted to be a physician assistant. And to be a physician assistant, if you don't know, you have to, first of all, go to four years of college and then to get into that graduate school, you need a certain amount of direct patient care hours. Direct patient care is not just shadowing, you have to actually directly work with a patient. So you have to have some kind of license. Say I wanted to go to Quinnipiac's PA program. You can go online and say, what are Quinnipiac's graduate school's requirements? And they'll tell you, you need 20, 500 hours of direct patient care. So that means that while you're in college, you have to be working as a nurse aide, as a phlebotomist, EKG. But actually, the average aide's age of entering PA school, I think, is 24. Because most people graduate uh, college when they're 22, work for like two years as a nurse aide or something like this, and then apply to PA school because they don't have the time to work as a nurse aide or whatever while they're in college. I didn't want to wait because I wanted to become a PA as fast as I could. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> a lot has changed. We're going to get into that probably, maybe. I don't know. See, I wanted to do dermatology. So if I wanted to go to school and be a PA and be a dermatologist assistant, I would be making around a, a little over $100,000 based on where I live 
in New York, Connecticut, tri-state area, the dermatologists that make the most amount of money are the ones who have a private practice. So if I wanted to go to medical school and become a dermatologist with a private practice, you wouldn't graduate and finish your residency and then immediately open your own private practice. You would probably start at a hospital or at someone else's private practice working under them, even though you're a doctor. So that means that I would finish medical school at around 29, 30, 31 years old, and then I wouldn't have my private practice till I was like 35, 40. So I wouldn't be making that big money, like 200, $300,000 or more until I was 40. If I'm a PA, I can be making over $100,000 at 24. So to me, I didn't want to be in school that long. I was like, I just want to be a PA, blah, 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 whatever. So right out of high school, I signed up for a nurse aid program to start getting my hours of direct patient care so that I could apply to PA school. So I got my nurse aid license when I was 18. I started this program right after graduating. I went to Harris School of Business. I was the youngest one there. I made friends with this woman who was like 60 years old and it was great. Like it was a four week class. We had tests a lot, but they weren't that hard. The hardest part was the test. There's a proctor who's watching you during the exam. You're in a mock hospital kind of room. There's one proctor and then one student or one dummy that you have to work on. I don't know if I have my notes. Let me see if I can find them. What we learned in school was like a textbook kind of thing, but this is what we needed to know for the state test. We had to learn 24 skills. So just to give you an example, they test you on how to wash your hands and if you do not follow all of these steps you fail the state exam and you have to take it all over again and you do not get your nurse aid license so for hand washing step one turn water on and get comfortable warm temperature don't let your uniform touch the sink and don't let hands touch the inside of the sink at any time while you're in there the proctor is with a clipboard writing things down if your hand touches the sink once you have to do it all over again, and then you have to tell her why you're doing it. Wet hands and wrists, keep hands lower than your elbows. If you break any one of these steps, like I said, you're gonna fail. Apply soap to your hands, and you have to do it for at least 20 seconds. Be sure to not let hands touch the inside of the sink. Hands together, rubbing palms, top of each hand with other hand, in between fingers with fingers of other hand, interlacing fingers, like doing CPR. Around each wrist, clean nails by rubbing fingertips against other palm. Count to two for each finger enclosed in the other hand. Pick each nail and go around each cuticle. Rinse hands and wrists with fingers down and no shaking. Get three paper towels and pat dry hands, discarding paper towels in the trash. Use the clean paper towel to turn off the faucet. So after you do all of those things without messing up, you can't just turn off the water. You have to get the paper towel, clean your hands, throw it out, get another paper towel, rip that paper towel in half, and then use each half to touch the sink and turn off the sink. That's like the easiest thing. Hand washing is the easiest thing. If she says, I'm gonna test you on hand washing, that's a given, everyone has to do hand washing. Hand washing, partial bed bath, hand and nail care, and like oral care. There's a cabinet of all your supplies. So then you know, okay, I need seven towels, that are large, seven medium towels, three, like you have to memorize every single combination. For mouth care, for the supplies, you need three towels, a barrier for the overbed ta uh, table, one for the resident's chest, and one for drying. You need two cups, the kidney basin, toothpaste, and a brush. So when they tell you, okay, you're gonna do mouth care, you're thinking, oh my God, okay, I need three towels, I need one basin, one this, one that. You're not thinking like, okay, I have to check their wristband first or I have to raise the bed first. So I literally spent like weeks going into the lab. After my class ended, I passed the four week class. You have to spend weeks in the lab. And luckily I had all these people that I made friends with that were much older than me, but I don't care. Like it was so much fun. We went there every day, studied. We wrote down all of this information that you need. Partial bed bath. This is when you're only cleaning the waist up. If you're doing perennial care, that's when you're cleaning the waist down. So if you are doing the partial bed bath for supplies, you need two large towels, one for privacy, the other for drying, two medium towels, one as a barrier for linens and the other to protect the bedding from getting wet, five washcloths, 
a basin, soap, lotion, gown, choose a blue one with Velcro, no buttons, have linen hamper close by. So that's just for one skill. There's over 20. You have to remember the combination for every single skill. And then this is how you perform the skill. This is one skill, all of these things, and it ends right here. You have to know how to put the catheter in. There's so many things that you have to know. So if you want to do this, it's not a joke. It takes a lot of work and it pays off though. So once you start working, usually you start off in a nursing home. Right now I don't work in a nursing home. I work with someone privately at their own house and they really just need a companion and someone to be there just in case something happens. They're pretty independent. So that's why I'm able to have long nails because I'm not actually working on her. So after I got my license I started looking for jobs and I got a job near my school I went to school five days a week and I worked as a nurse aide from seven o'clock in the morning to three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday and Sunday so I went to school five days a week worked two days a week didn't have a day off for a while but you got to do what you got to do and I also had a YouTube channel at the time and I was also doing a study which ended up being 68 pages which was like extracurricular in my school so if I can do all those things you can work as a nurse aide and be in college. Anyway, typically if you work at a, nurse, a nursing home, there will be one nurse aide for like six to 10 patients. Where I worked, I was one nurse aide taking care of about 25 patients. This is my little pouch that I had. I'm gonna cover the name because I don't want you to see the name of the company that I worked for, but this is my little badge. And we had a key card that would allow you to open every door. So what you would do usually is like keep it in your little pouch and you would just like oop, and then it would open. This is one of the schedules. You would go in in the morning and they would give you one of these. So these are all the patients that I had to take care of. This was like one of the ones that didn't have a lot of them. They would be double-sided. So if you count this, normal nursing homes are usually going to give you a, like max 10. This is 16 people and usually it was double-sided. I don't have that one. But I would go in at 7 o'clock in the morning. This building was huge. It was huge. It had four floors. There were about three to 400 residents. You go into one room, right? You're like, hi, Mrs. Blah, 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 good morning. They're sleeping. So if they're in a bad mood and you wake them up, it's not pretty. Like, they'll curse at you, they'll yell at you. It's all part of the job. But you go in, you go in, you introduce yourself. You're like, okay, what do you want to wear today? You go in their closet, you pick up their clothes, you get them up from bed. It, it, they can take sometimes like a few minutes just to walk to the shower. You get them in the shower, you clean them in the shower. That can take like 10 minutes. Then you, oh, they have to go to the bathroom, you put them on the toilet, you go outside, you wait for a little bit, you come back, you get them dressed while they're sitting down, you make sure they're all clean and fresh, you have to do their hair, make sure they have their jewelry on, like whatever. That is already like 25 minutes and you only had one hour. Now you have 16 more people that you have to go to, 16 to 24 more people that you have to go to. Unfortunately, they don't put their room numbers in order. It says four, and then it says four, and then it says two, and then it says two, and then it says two, and then three, and then four. So if you don't organize yourself and know the patients, you're gonna be running up and down the stairs, up the elevator like a million times, you're never gonna get anything done. You have to like look at your schedule and be like, okay, this girl, I know I can do really quick, so I'm gonna do her first. And then this girl takes a little bit extra time, so I'll do her in the middle. And then this girl or guy is the longest, so I'm gonna do him last. So you have to know each person's routine. You get a schedule. This says assignment B. It's not gonna focus, but just trust me. This other sheet I have is assignment A. So you have 16 to 24 patients, but you have A, B, C, and D. So you have to memorize a lot of people. I can't do the math. And I kind of miss it because seeing how happy you can make someone who really can't do anything on their own, it makes you feel really good. Every I always used to walk around smiling. Hi, how are you? Like, I, I really liked it. And no one really smiled besides me. Like, I was the youngest one. And I don't know. I think, like, people looked forward to seeing me. And I kind of miss it. And I kind of, I don't know. But I'm going to just get into the stories because I feel like I've been talking forever and you just want to hear the story. So one day 
someone was like, I don't have time to go get this guy, can you just bring him down? So I went to this guy's room, and he's pretty independent, so I didn't have to like shower him or anything. I just had to help him put his pants on, and his belt, and like his socks and shoes. So, I go into the room, and I'm like, hi, how are you? My name's Alana, I'm just gonna help you get ready really quick, and we'll bring you down. So, he was like, okay, like, nice to meet you, whatever. I put his pants on, and he has a really big belly. Like, he has, like, a pregnant, almost, belly. And I'm like, fuck. Do I tighten the belt on his stomach or right below the belly? You know what I mean? Who wants a tight belt around their huge, like, bulging belt? No offense. Huge, like, bulging. Like, he was a really nice man. I didn't want to hurt his stomach. So I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna put it around his waist, like right below the belly. So the pants are kind of lowish, but like his shirt's tucked in, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I'm wheeling him down to breakfast. After we brought all of our patients to breakfast, all of the nurse aides, there were only four of us for this entire building. We would all like just stand and watch everyone eat because they couldn't need help while they're eating. So we would just stand there. So I wheel him down, I bring him over to his little table because they have assigned seating. I bring his walker, he's walking. Meanwhile, I've said a hundred times, this is a big place. There's four floors, there's hundreds of people. Everyone eats in the same room. So this is a huge dining hall. There's like 20 or 30 different tables and there's people sitting at every table, like it's full. And like I said, he was the last person that I had to bring down. So everyone at this point was already sitting and eating. So he's walking with his walker to go sit in his chair after I wheeled him down. I pull out the chair for him. His pants just drop. The people at his table started saying something, so then everyone started looking, and all three of the nurse aides and the people who work in the kitchen, and like every person was hysterically laughing at me because my dumb ass didn't put his belt in the right spot or tighten it enough. And this poor man can't pull up his pants because his hands are on his walker, so he's literally walking to his seat with his pants at his ankles because of me. Another time, oh, there was this woman. She complained about everything. We always did our best to make sure everyone was comfortable. We had so many people we had to take care of. And there are people, like I said, who really make you miss the job, who really appreciate you. And like, if you ever have a free moment, you just go to their room and they tell you about their nine kids and how they go to church. And they'll, every time they see you, they'll shake your hand, say hi, and how are you doing? And oh, you're my buddy. And it's, it's nice. But like, you know, sometimes you just have those people. This one lady was so dramatic. I had to go and shower her. This was her shower day. They don't shower every day. It's usually like two days a week. So this was her shower day. I go into her room. I can't tell you how expensive this place was. She had not one room, but she had a whole suite to herself. This fucking lady is screaming on the phone from her bed. My anus is on fire, Caroline. That wasn't the real name. I can't say the real name. She was talking to her daughter. I have to call the ambulance. My anus is on fire. And I was like, you're gonna call an ambulance. Because she had diarrhea. I can hear her daughter like, Mom, you just had diarrhea. You're going to be fine. And she wants an ambulance to come because her anus is on fire. I'm just sitting there and I start paging people to come to the room because she's refusing to get up because she needs an ambulance. Like, she needs an ambulance. Eventually, people came to help me and they were like, Listen, your anus is not on fire. You're gonna be okay. After like 30 minutes of convincing her that her asshole was fine and that she wasn't gonna die from having diarrhea, she finally let me shower her. And um, yeah, that's basically the end of that story. Another time, I was going to this lady's room one day and there are supposed to be nurse aides that are there overnight. And there are supposed to be people who are taking care of people while they sleep. So things like this shouldn't happen. But I key in. I open the door to this lady's room. It's the morning time. I'm supposed to get her up, get her showered, take her to breakfast. I walk into the room and what greets me is a shit filled brief on the floor and a trail of shit from her bed to the brief. So apparently 
this woman shit herself in her sleep and got up, took the brief off as she was walking to the bathroom. And nobody came to help her. Not one person came to help this woman. So I have to clean up a trail of shit at seven in the morning. You know when you wake up sometimes and you feel nauseous, you haven't eaten, you're really hungry, and you, like, you feel nauseous? I used to feel like that every morning and I, my cafeteria wasn't open at school, so I would go to work not eating anything. So I feel nauseous already. Now I'm on my knees cleaning up a shit brief and a trail of shit. Welcome to the life of a nurse aide. Welcome to cleaning shit for $10 an hour. <laughs> Honestly, I've been this close to someone's asshole while they fart in your face and while you're cleaning their, their shit, like off their butt. There was one guy, I would go to his room every morning. You're supposed to have two people to work on him, but there were never two people. He weighed about 250 pounds. And every morning, without fail, his entire bed would be filled with piss. Every morning, he weighs 250 pounds. My little ass has to pick this man up from laying in his bed to sitting up. Then I have to turn him so that he can get off of the bed. And this isn't a shower day, so I can't give him a shower even though he's covered in piss. And it's on his back. So I have to get a rag and clean piss off of a 250 pound, 80 year old man's back. Then you have to clean their crotch, you have to do everything, right? You can't leave someone smelling like piss. Then he can't get up by himself, so I have to pick up a 250 pound man from his bed to a standing up position. And it takes him literally 10 minutes, literally 10 minutes to walk to the door. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for people who are not patient. I get so angry when I see people that I work with. I'll call someone to help, right? And this is someone that I work with. And they'll rush things. They won't do things the right way. They'll skip a step. And it's going to make that resident suffer. You're doing something too quickly that you're going to injure them. You're doing something too quickly where they're going to smell. They're not going to be comfortable. You can't. I've seen people put three briefs on someone because they didn't feel like going and taking them to the bathroom. They just let them go to the bathroom because they had three briefs on the whole day. That is not okay. It's a hard job, but if you apply for this job, you know what you're getting yourself into. You cannot treat people like they're not people just because, oh, it's hard and I don't wanna waste my, no. You have to treat every single human being with 100% dignity and respect and when you do, you end up creating this bond with that person. Even if you don't, you know at the end of the day that you're doing your job the right way. I have never treated anybody, even the people who are yelling and cursing at me or shitting themselves or whatever, as if they did something wrong, as if they did something embarrassing. You never want to make people feel like that. And I can sit here and tell all these funny stories and everything, but at the end of the day, this was my job. I stopped doing this job because every two years, you have to have a certain amount of hours working as a nurse aide, and then the place that you work is supposed to recertify you. And I found out that the place I was working technically hired me as a home health aide instead of a nurse aide, so they wouldn't recertify me. So if I kept working there and didn't switch and work somewhere else, I would have lost my license. So I stopped working there, I started working for a different company, and now I work with someone else different too. So I've worked in New York, Connecticut. I've done overnights where I stay up for the entire night. I've done those like multiple nights in a row where you're not sleeping for 48 hours. It, it's a hard job and you're literally getting $10 an hour. If you are a nurse aide, I have the utmost respect for you. We work really hard and sometimes the job, it's not fun and it's not fresh sometimes. But we do it because we have to or because we want to. It is very hard at times, but I wouldn't trade what I did and how hard I worked for anything because I've learned so much from it. I don't regret it. It's an amazing experience. And one day we are all going to be gone. One day we are all going to be in a bed, not being able to do everything we used to do. Focus on your family. Focus on your friends. Focus on being the best person you can. Focus on traveling and seeing the world.
You don't need that much money to travel. Go watch my video where we went to Curacao, me and my boyfriend. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, now you can give it a thumbs up because you watched the whole thing. But if you did already, I love you even more. You can follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. I'll leave everything down below. Subscribe. Okay, I have to go edit this entire thing. I love you guys and I care about you guys. And if you are not having a good day, I think I'm gonna start saying to email me because I get a lot of DMs and I have 630 Snapchats and I have a lot of comments and everything like that. If you have a serious, this is not, don't email me if you wanna just say like, I love your videos. Cause I see those DMs and I respond to those DMs. But if you have like something that you seriously wanna talk to me about, and that you think you need advice about or that you want me to help you with, I will do the best I can, email me. If you are having a good day, good for you, girl, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.